Okay, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to look at Venn diagrams and two-way tables. So uh, Venn diagrams are just a way to organize all the data so you can look at it and see information really quickly and easily. Um, so we're going to answer these questions based off of this Venn diagram. Um, and you probably have a similar first question. Uh, so let's just try it. Um, it says, how many students play both rugby and rugby union? So they're in the rugby league and the rugby union. So we can see from this circle, it says, this is the circle of all the people that play, play in the rugby league. And this is all the people that play in the rugby union. So the overlap is the amount that play in both. So that for us would be 44. So that was not too bad. There's 44 people there. It says how many people or how many students play for this one or this one? Well, that would include all of these 144, or 146, that include these middle 44 because they play for one of these two leagues. And this would include the 164. So it would be these, both these circles would be in the OR category. So we'll just add this up, 146 plus 44 plus 164. And that's 354. So we're going to get, if my pen would work, 354 for people that would play in this or that. Um, how many students play neither? Well, that's easy because it's not anything in the circles. So that'd be 106. Um, how many students play all together? Well, we would just have to take our 354 and add this 106 that we haven't added before. So that would be uh, 460. And it says, what is the probability? Now, as soon as it says probability, I want you to think of probability is always the total over your chance of getting it right or winning. So we're going to figure out what's our chance of getting some, it right, which they said we get it right if the student is both in the rugby league and the rugby union, which that would be, oh, this overlap right here. So that'd be 44 over our total. And our total we just did, which is 460. So that would be 44 over 460. On math space, it's going to want you to simplify that fraction. On a test, I don't care. I actually like this answer better than the simplified because I get to see where all the numbers come from. But they're going to want you to put something like, uh, oh, I don't know. Is this thing divisible by 4? I think 11 over... 115, yeah. So just be careful if it reduces. Um, there's probably some kind of reducing calculator that you could find on the internet too if you needed to reduce those fractions. Um, and then it says, what is the probability that a student is chosen at random plays for the rugby league or the rugby union or both? So it's just basically asking, what's the probability that it's in any of those circles? I guess they could have used the or that would have worked, rugby league or rugby union, but they decided to say a whole bunch of stuff. So that would be everything in that circle there. So we found everything in the circle to be 354 over 460. That definitely would reduce, but um, let's see. Is that divisible by 2? Yeah, so it, does, it divides by 2 and the other one doesn't divide by anything else, so that would be this. So, again, they're going to want you to reduce your fractions on a test. I would not care. Let's try another one. This question is nice because you're going to start to see some of the shorthand that we use. Um, because we don't want to write out every single time the probability of blah, 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 because that takes forever, um, the shorthand is like you use P for probability, and then you just put what you're looking for in there. So we want the probability that this thing is A, which if you look at all the people that are A, that would be, a lot of people just say 11, but that's not true because these people are also in A. They're in B too, but they're also in A. So the probability that you're in A would be 20, if I had the pen, would be 26 over the total number of people. 
and so we'll have to find the total number of people, which won't be too bad to do. 11 plus 15 plus 17 plus 16. 59. So there's 59 total people. So that'd be my probability of A. Again, they're going to want you to reduce it if you can. I do not care. The probability of B would be the same idea, which would that would be 32 over 59. Not A. So let's figure out everything that's not A. Well, this is A, this is A, this is not A, and this is not A. So it'd be these two. So that'd be 33 over 59. You can also see that it's like a a and not A should add up to be all of the people. Because if you're A, and if you're not A, there's no other types of people. So then we want not B, which again you could think about is the opposite of this, or just look on the table, which would be 11 and 15, so 26. Or, whoops, or 27, my bad, 11 and 16. which I just need to erase that really quick. So 26 over 59. I said it wrong again, didn't I? 27 over 59. There we go. We're still, we're still on point. And then B only. Well, only B would just be the 17 because these are also B, but they're also A, so... They're like, there's kind of overlap there, and they want only B, so that would be 17 over 59, okay? So again, for any of these fractions, all you, or any of these probabilities, all you're doing is making a fraction, and you're saying it's this over this. Let's try another one. Okay, so in this example, it's very similar to the first one, but uh, I thought about this one was a little bit better because they have a little bit more probability stuff at the end. So how many students chose to party? Well, that would be everything in this circle, which would be 60, 71. Yeah, 71 people chose to party. How many people chose not to study? Well, that would be everyone not in this circle, so the 32 and the 10, so that'd be 42. How many people chose to neither study nor party? So we can't use anything in this circle, so it'd have to be this 10. What's the probability that a student chose at random chose not to party? Well, not to party would be this 43 over the total. So let's find the total really quick. And this is always the worst part. Just adding all this up. So 114. Um, and then what is the probability that a student selected at random chose to study and party? Well, that would be this middle section. Um, so that'd be 39 over 114. What is the probability that a student selected at random chose to only study? Well, only study would be these 33 because the other people in there chose to party. And then what's the probability that they chose to study or party? Well, that would be this group right here, which is, um, I think, 90, 10, 104. So 104 over 14, which makes sense because it should be everyone but this 10 people. Okay. So again, on all these probabilities, all you do is write the fractions. And you notice that I didn't simplify any of these fractions, but uh, math space would want you to. Let's try the last one. Two-way tables are essentially the same thing as the Venn diagrams. They just are a different way of formatting it. Um, the first thing I like to do generally when I get a two-way table is to get some totals because you're probably going to need them. And so for this one, I'm going to add a category. I'm going to say total right here. And then I'm going to say total over here. So this would be the total of things that happened in the month of April. And this would be the total of... Uh, departures on time and delays. It's nice to have that information because you probably will need it for the different problems that you do. Oh, I bet I could add this in my head. 149 and then this would be 249 and this would be 77. 
Sweet. Okay. So it's nice to have the totals because if you have the totals, it's normally a little bit easier. And then you can find the total number of things here by just adding either of these two columns. Um, I think the total number of people is what? Uh, 326. So that's the total number of people. So then they're going to ask questions like this. How many trains departed during April and May? Well, that's easy. Uh, oh, departed. So that would be all the trains because these departed on time. These were delayed. So all the trains, we already found that, 326. What percentage of trains were delayed in May? Well, there was 32 trains that were delayed, and there was 149 trains in May. So 32 over 149. Notice how in this question, I didn't put it over the total number because they didn't care about the total number. They only cared about the trains in May, just these trains. What fraction of the total number of trains during the two months were departed on time in April? So now they do want the total number of trains, which is 326, and then departed in April. Well, that would be departed on time in April, 132. So this one is the probability, and they want... Um, Yep, so the, what is the probability that a train selected at a random um, in May, so we don't want everybody, we just want the people in May again, departed on time, well, 117 departed on time, and then what is the probability that a train selected from the two months, so we want everybody, was delayed? Well, delayed... There are 71 trains in total that were delayed. So you can kind of see how this works. Um, this one, if I go back, B, they did not actually want as this fraction. They want it as a decimal, or a percentage as a decimal. So for this, all you do is 32 divided by 149. And if you look at this, that's 21.5%. Because you can, like for a percentage, you go two decimal places out, and then... Everything past there is like your actual like decimals of your percent. So this would be 21.5%. If you get stuck on any of this, let me know. Um, and if you've made it to the video and you watch every single second of this video, uh, I don't think that's probably the best way to go about it. Skip what you know how to do or things you understand look ahead. I try to go through everything in detail just in case you do get stuck. You can watch everything, but you probably don't need to see me do every single step. So um, just let me know if you need any help.